Welcome. Thank you. Another segment of Boldly Now. My name is Rachel Morrison, and we have the wonderful honor to be with a dear friend of ours, Adam Apollo. He is uh, a spectacular being from the future, as you can see. And he is also the CEO of Superluminal Systems, as well as a genius in his own right around social system structure, uh, new economics, and new ways of reimagining reality from the most galactic and interpersonal perspective and is a true servant to all of life. Adam, thank you so much for being with us today. Mm, such an honor, Rachel. So good to see you as always and glad to be here for this event. Thank you for having me. Absolutely, yeah, we love having you. Um, and you know, I just wanna jump right into it. Uh, I wanna know how's it going for you? What are some of your amazing insights and revelations that you've been having of recent days that you're most excited to share with us today? Yeah, well, this whole thing's been a wild ride, but I can't say that um, the other, you know, 38 years of my life have been any less wild, I guess. So it's just taking things in stages as they come. And in each period of life, we're faced with uh, lots of growth and a lot of times a lot of loss and a lot of things that change very quickly and force us to relook at our lives and how we do things and how we operate and um, the stuff that we've kind of rested our laurels on and have so much confidence in that's not necessarily as stable as we might think. And so when the waters get a little choppy and the waves really start coming in and a storm blows through, uh, we have to learn, we have to get back to basics. We have to learn how to really reconnect with our roots and you know, make sure that keel is deep and we're managing those sails right and ride the wind, you know, ride the change as it's happening. Um, for me, the past few years uh, have been a lot about, you know, moving into a place of readiness to build the architecture and infrastructure that we need uh, at a planetary scale to communicate with each other to connect with each other, to share with each other in a way that is fundamentally grounded in sovereignty, that is innately aligned to the spiritual ethics, which give us the greatest compassion and care and, and real direct connection to our relationship with life here on earth. Um, we all have experienced in the past uh, five years or so the rise of the social media silos and the growth of uh, the sense of isolation and of manipulation that has come with having, say, for example, you know, your page, which may be the page of a nonprofit organization, a church organization, someone who's dedicated to doing service offerings for the public. And you may have built a large constituency and groups of people that follow you and that are interested in your work. And you've shared and put so much love and so much work into building this large audience of people who really care about what it is that you do and really want to make a difference in the world. And then you realize that when you're sharing with them, when you have an action item, when you have that thing, that call that says, let's get in and let's do something. Let's clean this river. Let's make this change. You put it out there and suddenly you realize you're not reaching those millions of people that you built contacts with, that you built connections with, that you built as followers. You're not reaching them because there happens to be a game at play. And that game is built around incentivizing social media networks to restrict our reach to the very people that have asked for the content that we have to share in order to monetize that reach as a primary business model. Our entire social media world is built around the premise that marketing should be the business model, but there's no holds barred when it comes to who and what suffers because of the algorithmic compression and limiting of people and individuals and organizations reaching each other. 
and the way that their arms are twisted, forcing them to pay money just to reach their own audience. I think the last time I went to go uh, promote a Facebook post, for example, for Unify, for one of our big campaigns recently, um, I went to go uh, do a promotion on the post and it told me that it was gonna cost $200 to do a single post to reach five to 10% of the amount of people that we already have in our audience of followers. So just to reach five to 10% of our, the audience we've already built, 200 bucks for one post. Uh, and this really just uh, showcases, um, you know, just, just the, the, how far down the hole we've come. And that's not even getting into, you know, the breaches and the security issues and the data abuse, the harvesting of people's data uh, that's going on within that world. And that's a space where I'm uh, very, very deeply engaged in working to create solutions. That's amazing. Yeah. Um, one of the pieces that you mentioned there was the isolation and the silos. And what I also heard you say was how a lot of institutions that we have grown a dependency on have decided to trade our, um, our, our ability to create diverse experiences for the sake of a continued level of isolating these mm -hmm. different nodes um, in exchange for a value into their pockets and not the consumers at large. That's right. That's right. Yeah, it's it's a huge it's a huge misplacement of valuation, and it's it's natural if you look at what the social media market is, and you actually look at the money flow in social media market. What they're talking about is is this: how much money are social media companies making by restricting the reach of the people that are part of those social media networks, um, and monetizing that reach, and then how much money can they make by doing that? That is the entire game, um, which is ethically simply backwards. It's just wrong. Uh, and so a lot of you know, what I've been working on and templating for really over 17 years, I've been working on distributed web technologies and prototyping different kinds of visualization systems, uh, building stuff like Trust Graph with my partner Harlan Wood, who's a brilliant visionary. He also built something called NodeSphere. These things are really designed to get us out of these kinds of boxes and look at the ways that data can actually flow peer to peer. It's the entire way the internet was designed in the first place. I had the honor of interviewing Doug Engelbart way back in 2006, I think it was, at the International Symposium on Digital Earth. Uh, and he invented the mouse and he invented hypertext. Now, hypertext is anytime you see that HTTPS or whatever, like every website, every link you've ever clicked. Yeah, that was Doug Engelbart. And, you know, his belief was that the role of technology is augmentation of our innate capacities. We're supposed to actually be building those things outside of us, which reflect the internal world. Now, of course, the challenge with that and, and the, the inevitability of that, too, is that when we have shadows inside, selfishness, uh, envy, um, greed, those kinds of things tend to actually get externalized into the systems that we create and we build. And then, of course, everybody who uses those systems suffers by that same rule. But if we can get more in touch with uh, capacities and ethics inside of ourself, like transparency and love and compassion, you know, caring, trust, uh, integrity, and we build systems based on, on that framework inside, now we have a system that actually enables uh, enlightenment at a mass scale, as Harlan would say, you know, or, or uh, an experience of technology that's much more akin to like heaven on earth, um, where we're actually seeing our systems reflecting the innate, you know, beauty and light inside of us and who we are. I cannot even handle the, the relationship to what you're saying 
to the visual of who you are as you say it with the halo of your infographic <laughs> behind you and this <laughs> angelic council that you created. Like you're already there at the future of the revelation of this entire vision that we've all been holding and moving toward. And, you know, how, how, how do you stay there? How do you stay there? And, and then most importantly, how do you bring it back to now so that it can actually continue to um, feel even more tangible as you get closer to the future that's calling you forward? Yeah, well, first of all, I, I'm not perfect. I mean, I've, I've made tons and tons and tons of mistakes and, and had many, many issues and challenges in my life. Um, and every one of those times where I've had to go through the crucible and face the dark nights of the soul, um, those are the moments when you grow the most. Those are the moments when you're able to see something more clearly that you haven't seen before. You're able to make a shift or a change in yourself that you weren't able to make before. And I think to some extent, you know, both the shadows we go through uh, give us compassion to see and understand better the challenges that others go through, but also they give us solutions. So as we learn actually to navigate more effectively through our lives, um, we also gain these keys to be able to template that work and share that work. You know, the, the name Templar, for example, um, with the Knights Templar, which is, you know, a lot of people have probably heard of, you know, in mid Europe and they were protecting sacred sites and sacred objects from being destroyed by sort of mainstream religion at the time that was trying to wipe out any knowledge or information from past groups and tribes and things like that. Um, a lot of the word Templar, it really comes from template, the act of instituting a design or a template, which can then be replicated by others to achieve the same result. And I think that's really what those of us that are uh, engaged in this work of planetary transformation are really doing right now. We're figuring out what the specific templates are that can create the greatest impact in the world. Amazing. Yeah, no, you're absolutely right. And um, by being willing to discover what those new templates are, um, creates a, a profound opportunity for people to uh, go through those dark nights of the soul that you were speaking to, those, those moments of vulnerability so that we can fully embody the opportunity of triumph that's waiting just beyond the moment of whatever it is that we're experiencing. The more that we can lean into that on an individual level, the more that we will be able to uh, experience what our, co our, our collective thriving potential can actually begin to look like together once we're willing to um, leave behind uh, the places in which we find ourselves uh, grasping for in mm -hmm. some, some of these moments. Exactly, exactly. It's a returning home time, you know, it's getting back to the fundamentals. And at least for me, it's about right now crafting the systems, uh, the interfaces and the experiences that can help us actually get more deeply in touch with our ethics, with who we are and what the ways of living and interacting with the earth and each other are that serve us the most that bring the most light, the most change, the most goodness to the world. And to really build that into our technological systems and capacities, lay a framework for that so that we have the templates that can serve generations to come. Yeah, we have an opportunity to, to really create from a place of healed, right? from a healing environment, as opposed to what has been created thus far in many ways, which is, as you said, um, the the discrepancies of the human reality that come out of the wounded space yeah exactly yeah. thank you all out there for doing your own personal deep dives into healing at this time and uh you know really relish it really enjoy it really take the spaciousness to go deeper there because it's so important to do so many of the biggest revelations and project work and white papers and science 
uh, that I've done and developed as well as technology that I'm building has really come out of doing that personal work and from going deep into those spaces of the mystery uh, where, where there's these amazing gems shining, hidden in the cavern. Well, I can certainly attest to that and um, say thank you for doing your work throughout the years that we've known each other, Adam. And uh, we at La One Earth Live and around the world, anyone who's tuning in are deeply supporting you in your mission, in doing your part. And uh, thank you so much for being with us today. Thank you. It's my pleasure. Uh, you guys can find me at AdamApollo.com. You can learn a little bit more about the integrative, distributed social web systems I'm building at core.network. And uh, I've got a few great uh, new white papers in science and technology coming out here very shortly. So jump on my mailing list and uh, I hope to see you guys soon. Definitely. And I would um, concur to, to agree that you guys need to check them out if you haven't already. All right. Thanks so Thanks, much. Thanks, Rachel. Adam. All right. Aloha. Aloha.